Good afternoon. We're going to take a look at the S&P at the moment and, and obviously the Dow, have a look at these markets. Now you can see that the recovery really didn't go towards um, or break that 38.2 level. That's coming in at 26.50. You've got the 21 day moving average coming in at 26.70 and already we're off. We're down 109 points. We're down four and a bit percent. Okay, so where can we go now? You can see that what happened <clears throat> beginning of the week, you can see here where you know, the market tanked, but recovered, and it recovered well. Markets do go back up, you know, they, they do. They, especially in these volatile times, the markets do. But what we look at is that 38.2. As a technical trader for 38 years, whether you believe in them or you don't, they work. I'm not asking you to believe in them. I'm asking you to open your mind to the fact that, you know, spooky, but they work. And markets do retrace back 38.2% if they are going to resume their recent trend. It doesn't matter if it's up or down, this is what we do. So at the moment, this has failed and it's not broken up. What we have to look at now is where can we go back down to? What would be a good value area for buying? Now I have conflicting views with this and the reason that I do is, is this, it's very, very simple. When a market fails to retrace back to the 38.2 level and really, you know, looking at yesterday's action, we did come close. We had the high yesterday of 26.37, you know, with 12 pips. 12 pips off of that 26.50. So it made the effort. It went straight through to 23.6 and it made the effort. So my quandary is once it's done that and it's retraced 38.2, it should resume the original trend. In this case, it would be lower, it would be down. Now, no one wants to see this in the first. In the first quarter of the month and which we're rapidly you know approaching it's going to be today so the market's going to be in a bit of a quandary and today really is what we need to look at because this will stop the first quarter we start the second quarter as of next week and if you look about what what we've actually done in this first quarter we started off quite good January really if you look what we've done in February and March and the trillions that have been wiped off of companies at just in this month you can see where the unease will lie and it will lie because they want to give out good positive results and frankly they're not going to be able to so do we buy this and where do we buy it my key for you today would be 24.73 to 24.41 okay that's my key area if it goes below here so if we go below 24 you do not want to be holding long positions okay so cautious buyer and a cautious person because I see things slightly differently to other people, I think. But I'm a cautious buyer down here. But I'm ready to flip if 2400 goes. If it does go, we're looking at down here, which is at 2365. I'm looking down here, 2344. I'm looking at that gap there, down to 2300. Okay, because that's still got a gap. So, optimistically, which I would hope I am, I would hope that the market can be held at this area here. But if it can't, you're out of longs and into shorts. That is the way forward. Now we'll take a quick look at the Dow. And you can see, yesterday the Dow hit exactly the 38.2. 38.2 was 22582. At actual high in the day was 22552. So, you know, or it, it, it did extend it a little bit. The high was 
as you can see, 22,595. So we did go up a little bit extra, but we hit it, okay? Now I've got this long-term trend line coming in that comes in today at 21. 21,400 to like 21,380. Yeah, or well, 21,380, okay? So any level down to there, I'm a cautious buyer. Watch the stochastics, watch the RSI, because we are beginning to look a little bit overcooked. Not yet, they're still pointing higher. But you have to be aware that if this trend line does break, and it, I can't go back on it and show you because it comes from like Zions, as you can see, I put lines everywhere. But if we do break down below that trend line, then I would say that we're gonna go to 25.60, which is the nine day moving average. But in the back of your mind, have this gap. And the gap is between this low here, which is coming in at 19,649, to this high here, which is coming in at 19,121. So you've got quite a gap. Markets don't like gaps. That hit in that 38.2 yesterday is very, very significant. Don't don't be misled. Don't get don't get carried away by the buoyancy of the market. It can correct back 38.2, same as the S&P. But what it's got to do, it's got to break it and it's got to stay above it. And really, I'd like you to see, see it close above the 21-day moving average at 22815. Will it? I don't think so. I think we've seen the rally. I hope I'm wrong, but I think we've seen the rally. Um, for your guide, I got out of all my stock market positions yesterday, obviously. And because I do believe in these Fibonacci levels, I do. Experience has told me they work. History has told me that they work. I think anybody that trades and is not aware of the major levels on these Fibonacci's, I think they're dicing with death. Um, I know a lot of you or a lot of people out there do run on automated programs, but let me explain. An automated program is never, ever going to give you the information that your eyes will give you. Never. It's too slow to react. It really is. So use the knowledge that you've got. Use the stuff that I've been teaching you over these years. And we will negotiate our way past it. I hate to say how well we've traded throughout this crisis because it, for me, it, I'd rather have not, to be fair, because nobody wanted to see the stock markets down at where they've been. But if you are trading this, you've got to know what you're looking for. Okay, I can't stress that enough. I have banged into you these Fibonacci levels forever. It's not the Fibonacci levels that's wrong. It's where people put them that's wrong. I've given you so many examples of how they work. Use them. I don't care if you're a long or short-term trader. Use them. If you're looking at an hourly chart, put them on. Try and marry them up with a four-hourly chart. Try then marrying them up with a daily chart, you will find that they all have a level somewhere. And that level somewhere is where the market is going to be buying it. It is a very simplistic set of rules that I apply to trading. I say it's the KISS theory. That's because I keep it stupid simple. Always have, always will. It works for me. It will work for you if you adhere to the rules straight away. I can see that the 38.2 retracement coming in on the Dow is at 29.50. If you look across the long-term Fib, that is coming in at 29.19. So you know that in that area, you are going to find support. You are going to find support. Unless it goes into free fall. So if you're a short-term trader, use that. If you're a longer-term trader, use the bigger ones. Okay, I'm back to normal. Hopefully, on Monday, um, 
obviously husband with broken hip holding up um, but I'm doing the best I can in very very difficult times and good luck for this afternoon I'll catch you all Monday morning